Today, I'm going to show you how to solve uh, an exact differential equation such that it needs a, uh, a parameter or a, how you say, a variable that is needed for it to be exact. Now, and it sounds complex, but a traditional uh, exact equation uh, takes the form that if you take the partial with respect to y or a partial of m with respect to y and the partial of n with respect to x they should be equal however in this special case it's not equal now for this to be equal I'm saying there has to be some sort of uh, integrating factor that satisfies this equation such that these two are equal so what I'm gonna do this might be a little fancy notation but what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to say that if you take the partial with respect to y of phi times m and set that equal to partial with respect to x of phi n, then we can solve this equation. Now, it's very simple to say this generally, but we have, we have to find an equation so we can solve for phi. So, to do that, we have to assume one or two things. And this is a matter of a process of elimination. Uh, maybe you could guess from what the function is of n or m, whether they deal with mostly y's or mostly x's or, you know, what cancels out. But we have to assume that phi is a function of x or a function of y. And that will simplify this equation so we can solve for phi. So uh, I'm going to show you how to, how to do it if phi is a function of x. But this is the same process if you do phi of a function of y. And at the end, I'll show you both equations. So if you just want to memorize them, that's fine. Uh, I'll just go through the derivation. So if you want on a test and you forget how to forget the equation or don't want to remember the equation, you can just do this method. It's very straightforward, very logical, and you could uh, solve for phi and find the integrating factor, therefore you can solve the exact differential equation. So, what we're going to do is basically uh, do the chain rule. So, take the derivative of this one with respect to y, such that you're going to get... I need to fix my camera, it's kind of tilted and it's bothering me. So, you're going to do phi, take the derivative of phi with respect to y, or the partial derivative times m plus the partial of m with respect to y times phi equals the partial of phi with respect to x times n plus the partial of n with respect to x times phi. Now we have this equation and like I said earlier I'm going to show you that uh, I'm going to say that phi we're going to assume phi is a function of x. And you might think, like, why is that even important? So, if you remember partial derivatives, if phi is a function of x, if you take the partial derivative of phi of x with respect to y, it's just going to be zero because there's no terms of y in this equation. That's why it's a function of x. So if you look at here, this becomes zero. This stays. This is act you can actually do this derivative and this stays. So what we're gonna do is say this equals zero. So we have this equation now. So partial of m with respect to y phi equals partial of phi with respect to x times n plus partial of n with respect to x times phi. Simple enough. Now, it's simply a matter of separable uh, uh, d differential equations. So, we can do this by, uh, by moving this phi over here and factoring out the phi. So, I'm going to do that in all in one step. So, we're going to do phi times the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x. Alright, and we're going to set that equal to the partial of phi with respect to x times n. 
Simple enough. Now, all we got to do is uh, put this over here, divide by n, and do the and move this over here so it's right next to this d5. So I'm going to do that real quick. We're going to do partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x divided by n and all this is being the integral to uh, dx and then we're going to move the phi over here that's a d phi now and divide by phi we take the integral of that now uh, to make this equation a little nicer I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know this notation that uh, phi or actually uh, no the partial of m with respect to y can be written as m y with the subscript y. And the same goes for the partial of n with respect to x. It's just n with the subscript x. So what you do now you uh, you can simplify this equation. This over here becomes a ln phi. So, you could say ln of phi equals my minus nx over n, the derivative. Or not the derivative, the differential. So, you have that equation. That's your equation, and you could e both sides, and you have an integrating factor, and you could find a, fa a, a, a factor that makes this true. Sorry about my finger, I smashed it the other day. I, uh, and that makes this true, and if that's true, you could go through the regular steps of exact differential equation and find the differential equation. So this is just an extra tidbit. Uh, you could go to the end, equation, end of the video and find the next equation with respect to y instead of x. So now I'm just going to assume this equation, but phi is a function of y. So if we do that, we're going to have this again, not this actually, we're going to have this, but this is going to be the zeroth term, or zero term. So I can rewrite the equation such that, um, So you get that. And once again, you could uh, collect like terms, distribute, or actually factor, and then divide and do all your algebra. So you get this equals a partial of m with respect to x minus partial of m with respect to y times phi. And if we, uh, I'm going to write these in the nice way, so we're going to do d phi, d, uh, dy, and x minus my over m times phi. Uh, we do ln of phi now, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, equals nx minus my uh, minus m dy. See, uh, now we have this, and if, if this equation, this should work out if, if this is true, and you go through the steps, and this is true. And uh, what should happen is that all these terms, even though m and x might deal with the two different variables such as x and y, they should all, uh, all should be uh, gathered in a way, in this way, to match the term of the d whatever. So in this case, all these functions should eliminate all variables of x such that it's only with respect to y. And you could do this integration. Same goes for here. You have this right here. All this should simplify to functions of x. So you could do this integration. Sometimes it's really nice. These are just constants. This is an x and good very simple integration. So that wraps up this video but I'm gonna rewrite the equation the second equation right next to this so you have 
them to compare the nuances, but critical nuances, times dy. So, those are the two equations, and you can use these in your test, your final, your homework, whatever you want to use it for. And it uh, makes life a lot simpler. Alright, if you have any homework questions, please comment down below, send me a message, email, whatever. And I'll try to do your homework problem before your homework's due. I'll see you next time.